Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. Now, of course, the big news out today is the Fed's seizing the Mt. Gox Douala account. And uh, we're going to read through this story from Ars Technica. This is being covered everywhere, of course. It broke yesterday, last night. Covered on the blog. But before we go into the details of this, I want you to look at the market. Now, of course, this is the Mt. Gox feed. You can see that we have grouped by price of $5 and down to 1000 And you can see, apparently, this sell-off from near 120 down to about 105 And then the subsequent recovery is related to this story. That would be my guess. Now, as far as the market depth goes, you can see that we're down to about 150,000 bitcoins. Now, I had actually planned to do an update yesterday and on the different exchanges. Didn't get around to it for a number of reasons. And uh, so I happened to check this figure. And I remember that the figure was 170,000. So we've seen about 20,000 bitcoins drain off the Mt. Gox exchange. Now, of course, there's never going to be any control of the Bitcoin itself. You just pop in an address and send it. Getting dollars off the exchange is going to be much more complicated and apparently going to be even more complicated going forward. Now, the other price point we're watching is that 100,000 figure. That hasn't shifted, even though the number of coins has shifted. So 175 is where we are on the ask and about 75 on the bid. Now, if you do the math here, I just did uh, back of the matchbook math here to try to figure out how many dollars there are. Now, this is assuming that uh, Mt. Gox doesn't let you bid for coins that aren't funded, and I'm pretty sure that's true. It's been quite a while since I've done anything on Mt. Gox. I do have an account with them, and uh, we'll, we will talk about their compliance with the AML and know your customer rules in a bit here but I think when you add these up it comes to between 10 and 20 million dollars of dollars that are bidding on bitcoins and uh, so uh, that's quite a bit of funds in a sense but then again that's really not a lot of money when we're talking about the type of money that's sloshing around in the world so uh, Definitely, I know that Bitcoins have come off the exchange. I don't know how many dollars have come off the exchange. And it's possible that uh, the dollars bid on Bitcoins and then they took the, the Bitcoins off the exchange. So your guess is as good as mine. I don't really know the answer to that question. It's going to be interesting to watch it going forward. Now, let's read a bit of the story and try to delve deeper into this. This is fairly complicated legal stuff, and I'm not even going to pretend that I know the answer to this. I'm just going to try to give some hints at some uh, directions that uh, people should begin looking at. So the story is, Feds reveal the search warrant used to seize Mt. Gox account. Bitcoin exchange shouldn't be dealing in cryptocurrency without a license. The Department of Homeland Security is investigating Mt. Gox. Now, I tried to do an investigation into that. And if you want to, you can go to FinCEN's site. FinCEN actually has a history of FinCEN. And pretty big changes started to happen with the, um, with the terrorism laws, with the Patriot Act. So, as far as the rearrangement of which departments are under each other, I, I don't really know. I know this is still under the Treasury. But as far as the DHS relationship with the Treasury, I'm not sure. So if any of you know, uh, you can clarify that. But the Department of Homeland Security is investigating Mt. Gox, the largest Bitcoin exchange for violating laws on U.S. money exchange and money transfers. And it's grabbing the exchange's money in the process. DHS officials refused to comment on the ongoing investigation, but they did provide a copy of the warrant and uh, we have that here. Uh, this is the warrant that they link there. And I've read through it. It appears to be legit. It looks like they had someone in Maryland. And I don't really understand the state connections either. There's a lot of this I don't understand. But uh, so they did uh, 
post that warrant and it was used yesterday to seize funds that Mt. Gox had in Douala, a money transfer service. Douala is a Des Moines, Iowa company that provides one of the most popular ways to move U.S. dollars to Mt. Gox where they can be used to buy bitcoins. In the warrant, a special agent with Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, states that there's probable cause to believe Mt. Gox is engaging in money transmitting without a license, a crime punishable by a fine or up to five years in prison. The warrant goes on to demand that Dwala hand over the keys to account number 8126491010, which is owned by Mt. Gox subsidiary Mutum Sigillum LLC and is held in the custody of Viridian Credit Union. The funds in that account, quote, are those of Mt. Gox customers that withdraw said funds from Mt. Gox and direct their transfer to Douala. Homeland Security used a confidential informant based in Maryland to conduct the investigation. The informant simply created accounts with Douala and Mt. Gox, bought bitcoins, and then changed them back into dollars. Tracing that money, HSI was able to see that the money passed through a Wells Fargo account, which was created by a single authorized signer, Mark Carpellas, the president and CEO of Mt. Gox. The Dwala account shows transfers to Dwala going back to at least December 2011, according to the warrant. The special agent then explains what appears to be the smoking gun. Carpellas specifically denied he was going to get into currency exchange business the warrant reads as part of the account opening process wells fargo required carpellus and mutum sigillum llc to complete a money services business accounts identification of an msb customer form that document was completed on may 20th 2011 and identified mutum sigillum llc as a business not engaged in money services the application asks several questions to include, do you deal in or exchange currency for your customer? Does your business accept funds from customers and send the funds based on customers' instructions? Carpella's answers to these questions was no, indicating that his LLC does not deal in or exchange money and that does not send funds based on customer instructions. Money transmitting businesses are required by 31 U.S.C. Section 5330 to register as such with FinCEN. According to FinCEN records on the 6th of May 2013, neither Mt. Gox nor subsidiary Mutum Sigillum LLC is registered as a money services business. The agent then gives a brief description of how Mt. Gox deals in the cryptocurrency of Bitcoin. Mt. Gox acts as a digital currency exchange where customers open accounts and fund the respective accounts with fiat currency, which is then exchanged into cryptocurrency by Mt. Gox. The cryptocurrency is known as Bitcoin. Fiat currency simply refers to any money that a government has declared to be legal tender. The exchange is bidirectional and allows customers to also exchange Bitcoins back into fiat currency and then withdraw those funds. The exchange of fiat currency and Bitcoins incurs a floating rate fee charged by Mt. Gox and is determined by the customer's aggregate amount of funds exchanged on a monthly basis. We've reached out to Mark Carpellis and we'll update the story if we hear back. Uh, so that's the latest I have. There's probably more, but uh, uh, we'll have to follow up in the future. So the first thing that jumps out at me here is that uh, the document was completed on May 20th, 2011, and they cite FinCEN records on May 6, 2013, and we know the clarification came in. So uh, my first question would be, is this an ex post facto law? Did the clarifications change the way that Carpellus would have answered those questions? And uh, then it just, uh, the rabbit hole just gets deeper from there. So uh, let's look at a couple of opinions here. Uh, from the Bitcoin, the uh, Bitcoin talk.org. These are the last comments. And uh, uh, Blue Note says they're not an exchange in the States, and they're not a money transmitting business in the States either. 
Those claims are beyond ridiculous. They just had a Dwalla account, which is now apparently a federal offense. And the next comment from uh, Eldon Sh Tyrell, uh, he says he called it almost a year ago that Mt. Gox saw this coming and played at least somewhat smart. Now you know why Dwalla deposits withdrawals were taking so long. This was inevitable and they planned for it. Unfortunately, it amounts to their customers playing musical chairs. My condolences to those still standing when the music stopped. So some of the questions people have asked is how is it that Mt. Gox is a money transmitting business when really what they're doing is uh, they're just making an exchange with Dwalla in the United States and then they're sending that money through their subsidiary overseas. Now the first question is going to be has Mt. Gox complied with the anti-money money laundering uh, know your customer rules. Now that is not actually an issue here uh, and I want to take you to this article here that is from The Verge back on the 1st of April. Uh, Mark Carpellis mentioned that they have a huge responsibility and compliance. Mt. Gox estimates it costs $25 million in the first year to become fully compliant in the U.S. Uh, so they already became compliant with uh, the FinCEN regulations. Uh, I know that to be the case because I had a Mt. Gox account and uh, I believe I'm trying to think the date I had that account whether that was before or after. It was definitely in 2011 but I know for a fact that at one point when I uh, logged into that account there was an announcement about how you had to upload your driver's license and uh, uh, comply with uh, uh, know your customer and anti money money laundering laws. So I know that Mt. Gox through the uh, bank wire regulations or the way that you got money to them through the bank wires definitely did uh, follow that know your customer rule, and uh, I saw that firsthand. So. I don't doubt this statement that they did spend $25 million to become compliant. So the issue apparently is not whether or not uh, Mt. Gox is compliant, because they are, as far as I know, but this LLC, which apparently they opened up in the United States to allow them to be able to transfer funds that it interfaced with Dwalla uh, back to the parent corporation. So that opens up another big can of worms and uh, that can of worms is going to be uh, whether or not a company that has a subsidiary within the country uh, is considered to be a money transmitter now it just gets more murky as we begin to look into the definition of what a money transmitter is and this is from FinCEN ruling back on May 25th of 2012. And uh, this is a statement that I found that seems to give the clearest definition of the term money transmitter. FinCEN's regulations as amended define the term money transmitter to include a person that provides money transmission services or any other person engaged in the transfer of funds. The term money transmission services means the acceptance of currency, funds, or other value that substitutes for currency from one person and the transmission of currency, funds, or other value that substitutes for currency to another location or person by any means. So that clarification as to the definition of money transmission services seems to be very broad. Uh, they already have stated back in 2012 that they consider substitutes for currency to be subject to that regulation. So if that's the case are Dwalla's substitutes for currency 
and is the transmission of Dwalas to the Mutum Sigillum LLC and then back to the parent corporation of Mt. Gox a violation. So you can see this is really complex stuff that lawyers are going to have to fight out. Uh, it's not at all simple and uh, it seems that FinCEN has left themselves a wide berth here to apply these rules. Now in the long run what does this all mean? I really don't think it means much at all because uh, not only in my mind is the horse out of the barn actually uh, an entire herd of horses are out of the barn because uh, there are cryptocurrencies as I said I was going to cover some of the alt cryptocurrencies I'm going to have to do that on the next episode and the charts and uh, when you go to crypto coin uh, charts you see the exchanges that are popping up so we've got alt cryptocurrencies popping up we've got crypto exchanges popping up uh, these things are popping up fast and furious. We have venture capitalists investing tons of money. Uh, and now we've got the Bitcoin bouncing back very quickly, uh, even on Mt. Gox, which is surprising. Uh, I'm going to have to start in future episodes examining the prices on other exchanges. For the most part, the sentiment that I've seen is that people see this as a positive and uh, that the Bitcoin has weathered an enormous amount of storms. Apparently by the price action it, it, it is people's belief that it's going to weather this storm as well. And uh, the question is with having FinCEN first and then the CFTC next and now we've got DHS uh, coming into this game uh, the question is, is uh, do they have any bullets left to fire? And uh, if they do, uh, what are they going to do? And uh, we'll talk to you next time.